Okay, so this is just a combination of two tutorials from one of the texture courses on my page here. I just wanted to upload it before commencing with the texturing of the anime passageway because I think these stuff are important to know. If you're interested, I also have a bunch of other courses on the Patreon. But anyways, enjoy this tutorial. Okay, so in this tutorial we are going to talk about the bump node. So, the bump node is a very special node. What it basically does is it allows you to take a texture node and through the bump node, it creates the illusion of extra detailed geometry according to the texture node you are using on the object that has the shader. Now the way to do this is to plug that texture node into the height option of the bump node, which resides just above the normal input of the node. Now, this bump node works by manipulating the mesh through the black and white values of whatever texture node you plug into the height input. So to have the most control over this feature, I like to plug in a color ramp in front of the texture I'm using and then plug that into the bump node. This allows me to control the density of the black and white values of the texture node, which in turn makes the fake geometry generated by the bump node either sharper or smoother according to what I set the color ramp to. So if I crunch the values it becomes sharper and if I leave space between the sliders it gets smoother or wider. There is also the strength slider on the bump node and it does as its name suggests. It controls the strength of the distortion you are applying onto the object. After doing all that and you got your little node 3, you then plug the bump node into the normal input of whatever BSDF you are using and voila you got your little distortion. Now this is not the only way to use this glorious node, no no no. In the following tutorials I am going to use it in two ways. The first way is the method we just mentioned and the second way is to add fake highlights to the fake geometry we made through the bump node. I hope this tutorial cleared up a function of this node, but if it is not super clear, the following tutorials should clarify the things you found obscure. See you there. Okay, so in this tutorial we are going to discuss the brick texture. The brick texture is one of the few texture nodes Blender provides. Its main function is in the name, it makes basic bricks. Now, it has a lot of options, which might make a little sense to you if you haven't played around with this node yet, so I'll just give you a rundown on some of the fixtures. Firstly, the option on the tippity top of this node, the offset option, deals with the layout of the bricks. If it is set to 1, all the bricks will be in neat rows. If the slider is set to 0, it will also be neat. The main difference appears when you roll the slider to somewhere in the middle, when the bricks break formation and they are not in perfect rows. Now you have full control of how organized or disorganized you want your brick texture to be and the number frequency slider below the offset option uh, controls how many rows are affected by this slider. So 2 represents every second row and 3 represents every third row and so on and so on. Secondly, the squish option is literally how you squish your bricks together. Depending on what number you have on the frequency slider below it, then every second or third or fourth row will be squished accordingly. So its default is set to 1, that is normal size, but the lower you go on the squish slider, the more squished it becomes. Thirdly, the mortar number slider controls the slides of the indents between each brick. So the higher you set this value, the thicker the indents become, and vice versa. Um, this slider I especially love to manipulate if I want to achieve a rugged brick texture look. Below that is just the smooth mortar option or the mortar smooth option. It just controls how sharp or how smooth your mortar is. The bias slider deals with the colors you select in the color section of the node. The default is set to zero, so it is perfectly balanced between color two and color one. But if you set it full to one, then all the bricks will be made to the color of color 2 and if the bias setting is set to minus 1 then all the bricks will take on the color that is set to color 1. Now all the other components of this texture is pretty self-explanatory and this was just a short rundown of some of the features of the nodes that aren't very clear and in the following tutorials we will practically use this node and manipulate some of these parts we have discussed over here. See you in the next tutorial.